All right. Um, Russ, will Here. you call a meeting to order? Joe Becker. Turn Present. my phone off. Peter Bussemak. Here. Scott Bergen. Cool. Lisa Dean. Here. Dave Pemble. Here. Russ Roloff. Here. Kelsey Weeks. Here. Superintendent Collins. Here. All right. Could I get a motion and a second to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Is there a going to be a closed session at the end, Tim? Yeah, we will to uh, just a quick update on the principal negotiations. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <coughs> um, no discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Could I get a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the July 18th, 2018 regular board meeting? Motion. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Could I get a motion and a second to approve the bills payable? So moved. Move. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. With that, we'll move to the superintendent's report. That business out of the way. Yeah. Um, again, as I shared with board members, typically in August, another light board meeting with lots of hires, resignations, et cetera. And then as we get into September, we'll start having some heavier duty work, work sessions and eventually then staff that come and present um, at board meetings as well. I have it listed as kindergarten uh, enrollment update, but I think Deanna has up on the board just some overall look at our, our numbers. And really, I just want to remind you as board members, I don't put a lot of weight in this right now on whatever, what is it, August 22nd, because we're still going to have uh, a lot of changes. Uh, high school 1481, right where, around where we expected. The element or the middle school um, within reason of where we expected. Uh, and the rest of the number is pretty close other than uh, kindergarten, which is a little bit down. And um, as you, well, and that's actually if we would be at that number right there, that'd be the lowest number of, in kindergarten in the last 16 years that I, well, probably in the last 20 Yeah, and then 30. reaching back beyond yeah. that even. So, um, and as you know, that then does impact your enrollment for an entire decade as that, as that class comes through. Uh, most board members understand that our enrollment typically uh, will uptick a little bit in fifth grade because we have some students from parochial schools entering our system in fifth grade. Then we uptick again um, in high school yeah. because we have students then from our parochial school system coming there as well. So again, I just want to remind you, th those numbers were of yesterday, they've already changed today. I don't even know what they are. And really the numbers that I really start to zone in is around October because usually our October count is where families typically will, will start to settle in. So I just wanted to um, let you know that that's uh, where we're at right now and you know it could change by 40 students next week um, because we're continuing to see a trend where parents enroll um, the week be week before. Now do I believe that there will be an uptick of 40 students in kindergarten? No. Uh, but still very good, I've said it all along, 266 students in a grade is still a very strong school a decade from now as well. There's still great opportunities for students there's great opportunities for, for parents. I graduated in a class of 35. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't have a lot to select 800 from. plus. <laughs> so um. so it was, it'll still be good. Okay. Can you speak just um, briefly to the distribution between the elementaries? Uh, yes. Um, right now, I think both Pinecrest and McAuliffe are right at about 502. And, well, as of yesterday, and JFK is right around 470 uh, right now. Okay. So still staying. Relatively balanced. Yep, relatively or balanced. Or and much more balanced than it's been. And we all know that has been. Uh, Pinecrest being at 620, we needed to get students out of there. And yep. Paul Baker said the other day at one of our meetings that staff for the first time have some freedom to be creative. <laughs> um, can I maybe use that room for this? Can I maybe occupy that room to try this? where before there wasn't that freedom to think of what could I maybe use that room for. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we're still pretty close to balance in our three elementaries. Okay, thank you. 
the size of the senior class, do you recall? I don't. I have it back on my desk. It's like 320 or something. Back yeah, I, I don't. Okay. <coughs> um, the policies, I did remove one of them originally. Um, when you probably first saw this about three or four days ago, there was a fourth policy on there. Um, I decided to withdraw that from the first reading because that one's not required by MSBA, so I wasn't 100% certain that I then wanted to move forward with it yet at this time. But uh, uh, these three policies are first reading. What happens is if any board members have some questions about them or some concerns, you let me know and then I pull the policy committee together and we meet before the next board meeting. Um, but the first policy, I don't even know if you have it up there or not. I don't. Um, but there were, there were three policies uh, outlined. The acceptable use policy, the major change in that policy was just on uh, GPS monitoring systems. Oh. So within that policy is um, when you can have your cell phone at school, uh, when you can have um, your cell phone out, etc. So Dave Haveman came to me and said, you know, Tim, we have students, and rightfully so, their parents um, want a GPS system both at school and at home in case, because they're maybe vulnerable, um, in case they walk off and, and don't get home. Well, those systems now are very sophisticated for a reason, because they can listen to wh what the student's saying, so then maybe the parent could pick up where they're at. Well, we don't want that. We don't want parents listening in on, on classes. That's not something that we want as a district. So um, this, the, the, what we added to the policy is a draft from um, several other school districts basically saying, we recognize that parents have a GPS um, for, their system, for their student. Uh, we accept that. But please, as a parent, know that we expect that that's to be turned off during the day. That's basically um, what it says. Uh, the wellness policy. There was just one minor little sentence change in the wellness policy, and that was recommended um, by Kim Heron as she looked at uh, the state policies and, and recommendations. And basically, it was just a, a small word change saying that we will look to promote um, smart foods and foods within our healthy system. So that was the one minor change that met the guidelines. It didn't change any of our practices um, on what we'll be doing. It also looks like maybe the um, compliance with wellness policy has been expanded to include the director of food service? Yes, yep. Okay. That was another change as well. Food and nutrition, yeah. And then the crisis management policy is a brand um, new one for us. It's, it's mandatory uh, from MSBA. So that one, I took the exact uh, language from MSBA and I included that, that in our policy. So again, um, after tonight, you take it, you look at them, and if you feel that there's anything, there was nothing in the crisis management policy that I said, oh no. Um, it's, it's not dramatically outside our current practice. No. I mean, we've done a lot of the coordination with local right. agencies, and yeah, it so looked the like the designation <coughs> of command, the command structure. Yeah, so there was nothing where I said, have. Um, whoa, this is something that would go against what we're currently, currently doing. So on those three policies after tonight, again, the acceptable use policy was just saying that we recognize GPS and we accept that within our system, but we want the, the uh, listening, end listening end off. To be opt out of. Yep. And then the wellness policy was just a minor change recommended by our food service director. And then the crisis is a full-blown policy from MSBA. Then the, yep. Just a point of clarification on the, on the first <coughs> policy. Um, <coughs> where it says under no circumstances may personal uh, electronic devices other than the GPS tracking feature be used in locker rooms, restrooms, or rooms designated for change. So we're saying no phones in the locker rooms at all? No, that that's on the GPS, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I consider this to be a personal electronic device. Yeah, so, so read it again. Under no circumstances may personal electronic devices other than the GPS tracking feature be used in locker rooms, restrooms, or rooms designated for changing. Um, I'd have to, 
I'd have to read that through and think that through. I think that language was tying just to the GPS. Okay. And it wasn't. I read it in. Which, I know. Which section are you in? I'm on it's halfway down. Letter M. Yeah. It's the last. Letter M. Last highlighted area on. Okay. On the policy on policy 5.4. Yeah, because to me, I I would agree with Peter that that sounds more like that's a personal electronic device and it can yeah, only be used for a GPS whereas you shouldn't use it as a phone or a camera or anything like that. Right, and that's what I thought it would be. I don't think you want somebody walking around mm -hmm. videotaping or... We don't, yeah. but <coughs> we also don't say leave your phones at the door. Right. Because... Be left in a bag. Right. You'd have it. Phones out I mean, it's, it's really hard to enforce, right. would be my guess. Right. And, um, but if it's no phone at all, it's easier to enforce, but I, I can see where that is going to cause a different set of issues for you. Right, because we the phones will be in the locker room yep. because no student's going to allow it outside of their, because it'll get ripped off It'll then. be in the locker room, but are they allowed to use it in the locker room? They're not supposed to be, no. Okay. But that's where we, that's where the principals then get involved. But I'm going to reread then section M. Okay. Because that's, that's not how I read it. I was, I was in my mind thinking <coughs> the GPS on that one. Yeah, to me it sounds like personal electronic devices, any of them, can only be used for the GPS. Like basically your Life 360 yep. can be on and not, but can't be out. Yeah. Um, Russ? Yes. What, what kind of experience does the Y have? Because every single Y you go into will say, you know, no cell phone use in the room. This is strictly enforced. You do a bunch of signage. Do you know if that is generally effective. I will say I see people we still like you know yeah. messing with trying to get music yeah. up or something. Yep, correct. But correct. the the you expectation the is your yeah, phone will be in your pocket. It'll be in your bag. It's not going to be out. Yep, correct. To do anything with, you know. Correct. Okay. I but feel comfortable with that personally, but. But thanks. We'll I'll reread that, that again forward. and and look at that. So again, if you find anything else, let me know, and if I need to, then I'll pull together the policy. A committee. Um, Metro Exu, probably about two months ago, I shared with you some of the organizations that we are a member of. Metro Exu is one of them. Um, so when we, when we approve the what are we going to pay for the MSBA fee, what are we going to pay for C, what are we going to pay for Metro Exu, I shared with you that Metro Exu um, we use them for example, Knowledge Bowl. I think we had like 22 events with them throughout Knowledge Bowl, our high school, our junior high, etc. We use them for training for some of our special ed needs. We had some principal academy training with them, etc. Lisa and I, sh I, I just want to let you know that um, Lisa and I, because Lisa is the, the representative for the Metro Exu, um, having that doesn't mean she's ever been at a meeting for Metro Exu. It's just that if anything comes up, she's our voting member. Well, an issue has come up now because <laughs> Metro Exu um, has been asked by formerly Ties to join any joint powers. So Ties now um, is NJPA, which now changed their name to Sourcewell Technology as one of their offshoot companies has asked Metro Exu to join with them in a joint powers. And I, I called for clarification from Julie Frame, um, who I've known probably for the last 15 years. I mean, I don't know her, but I've, I've met her um, once or twice a year at different uh, conferences, et cetera. And I said, I read what's on the paper, but I just want to make sure and clarify what I'm reading is, if I'm interpreting it correctly, They've asked you to come together as a joint powers, but you're not sharing any fiscal <coughs> responsibility whatsoever. No. They're asking you just to help govern them as an organization. Yes. Um, Metro Exo will get $100,000 from them for this governance and behind the scenes work that you're doing. Yes. Okay, I don't understand why they're doing that, but um, so, so far the picture is you're benefiting by $100,000 for this uh, joint powers and next year now I'm not going to get a bill because we're part of, because you're a joint powers with them because if we do, I will remove our um, agreement with Metro Exu. And she said, no, we, we each are separate entities, so it's just like 
city of Hastings school district having a joint powers governing this part of their their business um, now they can agree to eventually come in on some joint ventures fiscally if they want just like us in the city are together on the senior center fiscally but that that will be up to them so I just want to let you know after reading uh, the document on the joint powers agreements and her verifying my interpretation of it I, I have shared with Lisa to go ahead and, and put signature that I'm okay with Metro Exo um, entering into a joint powers agreement with them so I just wanted to um, as our representative I it's not that we had to take a vote on this issue um, and so Lisa did sign and we'll mail that off that that they can enter together in that partnership and then the last item that's um, <coughs> not on here is just an update on on facilities <coughs> uh, Ross uh, and Dave and Peter yesterday uh, Joe had another commitment he couldn't be at the meeting so we met for about an hour and a half to two hours with uh, Wold and with um, our middle school principals and I don't know two or three uh, physical education teachers and I just want to share with you and share with the public that our, our first phase is is wrapping up we heard from Wold that the track is 97 percent complete and by about August 29th it will be finalized as they have the final um, striping on the track the roof project um, good deal I mean we didn't anticipate it but it's going to be done probably by the, the end of this year um, for probably for the reason that it's been such a good weather summer they didn't have to pull their their contracting <coughs> crews to other projects and they're able to get the, the high school roof done there's going to be some change orders that we heard about on some drain pipe issues and some other issues that will come to the um, the next board meeting and that's part of um, getting into projects and the parking lot uh, is all done except the back side of the school I call it the back side of the school because we have to bring a crane in to bring in the chiller also the roofing contractor didn't want that done because then um, they could bring in their supplies on that back parking lot the parking lot says hey I don't want to come back here next year just to do <laughs> that so if I'm gonna have to relocate next year and come back and do that somebody's gonna owe me some money so between those uh, contractors and Wold originally the chiller was going to come in in about November well you can't do asphalt um, in late. late November so they were able to bump it up and after the first week in October they could come in and start prepping and take out our current chiller and start getting ready for the new one that means we'll be without air conditioning at the high school about the first week in October you can't open windows at that site you can't open doors so it could get a little a little ugly if it does get warm in those first two weeks so I was asked uh, my per my thoughts on it um, board members were lightly asked my their thoughts but I had already kind of made the decision that we're moving forward we're gonna have the chiller taken out after that first week then over EM break when we don't have students in the building they'll come in and try to do a majority of the chiller replacement then they'll get that done then the parking lot company will come back in and finish the the parking lot and that will be wrapped up and then the chiller will get finished um, hopefully by November 1st and then as soon as they're done with that that company will come and do the chiller at Pinecrest so um, I did share um, today with Mike Johnson and Trent Hansen because if it does get warm there'll be some complaints because it'll get it'll get a little stinky so to speak but you our system will still be able to bring in fresh air from the outside so typically in October in the evenings it's going to get down to 55 or 50 so in the evenings we'll be bringing in cold air and if the building will be cool then if that does if we do get a little bit of a heat streak in October so we'll probably still it will remain cool till about noon and where it will start getting a little bit uncomfortable is after afternoon well our, our, our school day is done at 240 so where the most uncomfort will be will be for some teaching staff and then volleyball and volleyball games in the evenings for a couple weeks so I just want to let the rest of the board know um, that at least Mike and Trent know that they can give a, a heads up on it um, 
McAuliffe parking lot is done. Our exterior lighting on all the sites is in delay. That could create a little bit of a problem. Um, the Wald said part of it is tied to the tariffs, that they haven't been able to get the aluminum poles and the steel poles as when they thought they, they would. And where that's a little bit of a concern is in the evening now as we get into school, depending on when the poles do come, parents are coming to pick up their students at the high school, they're coming to pick up their sons or daughters at the middle school, and it's, it's dark out then on our premises, but we're kind of at the mercy of, of the poles showing up. And our cameras district-wide should pretty much be ready to go by the, Deanna has been working uh, with all of our sites and our and the camera company on that, we should be ready to go with um, almost all of our sites by the, the start of the school year. And then we've had a lot of discussion on Todd Field, and there's been a lot of discussion um, on the middle school gym and the shower and the locker room. We at our meeting on Tuesday, we pretty much had the middle school uh, locker room finalized. And really, as board members and myself, we sat back and listened quite honestly, to the teachers and, and the principals and the AD. And so, because they know how it works, they know how it operates. We just interjected a few thoughts, but <coughs> I think all of us and, and, the, and the principals and the uh, um, teachers came to a pretty quick conclusion on the design that was really good for students, so that was good. Um, so now what they do is they take that design concept and now they'll send it out to their estimators and then we'll come back with what we think the cost of that's going to be. They're also doing that on Todd Field. Todd Field's getting down to some of the final stages, and then they're going to send that out to the estimators. So what I'm anticipating for the rest of you as board members is that probably about a month and a half from now we'll have those numbers. They'll run it past our facility committee, and then at a work session probably in October, um, we'll spend quite a bit of time at looking at those two projects for us as an entire board and then hopefully coming to a conclusion that, yeah, let's put this out for bed. We're, we're pretty comfortable now that, that we've seen the estimates. I think after that work session meeting, then what I will start to do is have an e-news where um, parents and community can link to some of the things that we've seen now as a board and some of the layout concepts. I'll probably have a Hastings um, cable television um, short presentation with one of the board members and myself from the facility committee and we'll have some of the designs on there so that the community can kind of see what we're thinking about with the middle school and the high school. But I don't want to have that level of communication with the community until we as a board um, know the direction that we're, that we're going. I just want to let you as board members know too and, and the community who's watching is that um, when you get 12 to 14 people in a room, there could be a lot of, um, boy, I really want this, this is fabulous. Or the 15 to 18 people who sit on Todd Field could say, yeah, we want the Cadillac version. Um, board members who sat with us, and um, our staff is very fiscally conservative too. Um, they interject, you know what, we don't, we don't really need that. Um, it'd be, we want nice things for our students, we want nice things for our staff, for our community but we do not need the Cadillac model. And our, and our teachers and our principals and our AD said that repeatedly. And Trent Hansen said that that's been the community feedback as well about Todd Field. We definitely want it to be nice, um, but we, we don't need um, the Cadillac, Cadillac version there either. So that's, I just want the community to know that's great to see from our staff and our community. Um, they want very nice things for their students. They want nice things for the community but it doesn't have to be um, laced in gold. So that's the facilities, and we'll be bringing back that to the entire board uh, probably in October to work session. <coughs> How about um, something that maybe we'll talk about? Um, the, the security at the high school, I mean, we'll be working on some you know, different plans. Is that kind of still, that, kinda, still kinda moving along? I think that with the high school entrances, um, we're, our first phase is waiting to see what MDE does with the grant process. Okay. And to me, if it's not approved in the grant, grant process, which now I'm, it's no longer first come, first serve, so I'm not as optimistic. Uh, 
then we'll push that to the let's wait till the end of the bond three years from now and see how much money we have left and then we'll start prioritizing what other things that we want at that time and that will definitely be one of them so it's um, it'll be in the hands of MDE for a few months and they've given no determination of when they're going to let us know um, who's a recipient of the grant money or not so <coughs> so with that we're on to action items okay were there any further questions for Tim on any of his report items okay. I just had one note here that I wanted to add because um, Dave did make it at our meeting or asked a question uh, again for the community we you know we are putting in the LED lighting uh, definitely that's going to help our operational costs uh, as well so we continue to look at those savings as well Anything else? Now I'm, now I'm ready. Yep. All right. That was my last right. note. That was actually mm -hmm. done now this time. Yep. Okay, terrific. So we'll move through the action items. Our first action item, um, I'd like to get a motion and a second to approve and accept two employee contracts, on one for non-public nurses and the second for the family resource coordinator. Can I get a motion and a second? I'll motion. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next we have um, a motion to approve a, con to approve a contract with K-12 Facility Management Services for Professional Management Services. Could I get a motion and a second and then we'll... So move. Second. Okay, thank you. Could we get a little information? Yeah, this, this really ties into our uh, CISCO um, agreement that we've had with them. CISCO uh, had been working with us. It's, it's not an added cost to us. They've been a part of TIES too through uh, Watts Transportation Services and now because TIES is no longer um, there, this, this then is the new name for their business with that. So it's not, okay. an, it's not an expense to us. Okay. So essentially it's a name change? Yeah, it is a name change. Okay. And we're agreeing to their same to the same rates and, and services and service. uh, if we use them. Yeah, okay. What they do is um, they try to, we don't use them very much because we're on the outer ring. So they try to coordinate with other school districts that are closer into Minneapolis and St. Paul and that they find out that oh. five kids from South St. Paul need a ride to this school. They, they hook up with West St. Paul and they coordinate it and, and they do that management. So. Okay. All right. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next, we have a motion to approve the classification and corresponding prescription position description, excuse me, for the following, which is a cleaner grade four. I believe everybody got that um, description in the drop box. Could I get a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? We're just really hoping that this alleviates some of our custodial problems. We're not getting the applications that we've received in the past, and so we're opening up four-hour positions, hoping that that matches with some other people's uh, lifestyles. Okay. And so far, we have had some applications, so we're hoping now that this does solve part of our problem, that we definitely had a problem last year. Yeah. Okay. Good. Is there any further discussion or questions? All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Our fourth action item tonight is a motion to approve a number of leaves. Again, those are listed in the agenda, which is available um, online. Could I get a motion and a second? So move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Our fifth action item is a motion to approve the resignation of a number of individuals. Could I get a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And then our sixth action item is a motion to improve the employment of a slightly longer list of individuals. Yeah. <laughs> um, could I get a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? 
we've had a lot of changes in the last week. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's all I'm going to say. Um, and just as we, you know, we're struggling in a lot of other positions too, part-time positions, and I think that's a reflection of the economy right now. It's very strong, so um, we still have a few spots to fill. That's that all I'll open. say. Yeah. yeah, well, I believe it. Is there any um, discussion or questions? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Pull the same sign. Motion carries. Next, we have uh, our seventh action item is a motion to approve um, three retirements. Can we get a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. And then we'll wrap up with, uh, for now, a uh, motion and a second to close the meeting for a negotiations update. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. And we can just move next door so that you can 